Tarantula cannibalism. This topic is both fascinating and gruesome at the same time. Tarantulas are one of the most fascinating creatures on this planet, and they are also known for their unique behaviors, which includes cannibalism. In this video, we will explore the causes and consequences of cannibalism in tarantulas, as well as its ecological significance. Tarantulas are often depicted in movies and television shows as dangerous creatures that attack humans. While this is largely a myth, tarantulas are indeed capable of cannibalism, especially when they are hungry or when they encounter other tarantulas. In fact, cannibalism is a common behavior of tarantulas, especially in the wild. While it may seem counterintuitive, cannibalism plays an important role in the mating process of tarantulas, and it has several benefits that we will explore in this video. One of the main reasons a tarantula would eat another member of its own species is because of resource competition, such as food, water, or mating opportunities. Tarantulas are solitary creatures, and they are known to fiercely defend their territory against other tarantulas. When resources are scarce, however, tarantulas may resort to cannibalism as a way to eliminate the competition and secure their access to these resources. If you think about it, the nutrients a tarantula needs for survival are the same nutrients a tarantula is made up of. So in a sense, a tarantula would actually be a healthy meal for another tarantula. Another reason tarantulas engage in cannibalism is a form of self-defense. When a tarantula feels threatened, it may attack and consume its attacker as a way to protect itself. This is especially true for smaller tarantulas, which are more vulnerable to predators than larger ones. But not all cannibalism takes place among full-grown spiders. When the baby tarantulas, known as spiderlings, begin to hatch, they are still inside the egg sac. This is where cannibalism often occurs. The spiderlings are born hungry, and they will start to eat whatever is available to them, including their siblings. Among spiderlings, the main reason for this cannibalism is competition for resources. The egg sac is a limited space with limited resources, such as food and oxygen. The spiderlings need these resources to survive, so they will fight and eat each other to get them. There is also a genetic component to this behavior, and some tarantula species are more prone to cannibalism than others. This may be because they have evolved to better survive in a crowded environment. However, not all tarantulas engage in cannibalism. Some tarantula species are more prone to cannibalism than others. Some species have been observed to cooperate and even help each other out during the early stages of their development, like the Monocentrophus balfouri, for example, which are famous for their ability to cohabitate and live peacefully together in communal enclosures. It's worth noting that cannibalism isn't always fatal for the spiderlings. Some of them may survive by hiding or being too big for their siblings to eat. But generally speaking, the more spiderlings that are in an egg sac, the greater the likelihood of cannibalism occurring. I want to take a moment and thank you for clicking and watching this video on such a macabre topic. And to ask you to please consider subscribing if you would like to see more informational videos on arachnids and other invertebrates in the near future. And now a word from the sponsor of today's video, Tarantula Cribs. Introducing the brand new Tarantula Cribs warp-free lids, specially designed for humid enclosures. Currently available for select slider crib and cube enclosures. Variations in humidity can cause acrylic to warp or bend. This can leave you in a jam. Warping is more common in humid environments, as the moisture in tropical enclosures can cause acrylic to absorb water and subsequently bend, causing lids to drag. These new lids are made from alternative materials that is warp resistant and resilient in humid conditions. They are currently available in select sizes, with more sizes to come in the near future. Make a splash and take the plunge with the new warp resistant lids from Tarantula Cribs. Cannibalism in tarantulas also helps to maintain the genetic diversity in the species. When a male tarantula mates with a female, he runs the risk of being cannibalized by the female afterwards. This may seem counterproductive, but it actually helps to ensure that only the strongest and healthiest males are able to reproduce thereby improving the genetic quality of the offspring. 
Cannibalism and tarantula mating also helps to reduce competition between males for mating opportunities. Male tarantulas are known to compete fiercely for the attention of females, and they may even fight each other to gain access to a female. Cannibalism helps to eliminate this competition by ensuring that only one male is able to mate with a female. This reduces the risk of injury or death to the males before they are able to pass along their genetics, and helps to ensure that the female is not overmated, which can be harmful to her health. It also helps to ensure that the female is well-fed during the mating process. Female tarantulas require a lot of energy to produce and lay eggs. When a male tarantula approaches a female for mating, the female may see the male as a potential source of nutrition to help her produce these eggs. The male tarantula's body is rich in protein, which is an important nutrient for the female during the reproductive process. In addition to protein, the male tarantula's body also contains other nutrients, such as lipids and minerals, which can benefit the female's health and egg development. By consuming the male tarantula after mating, the female is able to obtain a significant amount of protein and other nutrients that she can use to produce and lay her eggs. This may seem like a harsh reality, but it is actually an important part of the natural world. By sacrificing himself for the good of the female and the offspring, the male ensures the survival of his genes and helps to ensure the success of the next generation of his species. However, it is also important to note that not all tarantulas consume the male after mating, and not all males are cannibalized. It's also important to remember that cannibalism is not the only source of nutrition for female tarantulas, as they can also obtain nutrients from other prey items in their environment. Most captive breeders are very vigilant to separate the male and female as soon as they are done mating in an attempt to keep the male from being eaten. This is mainly done so the male can be used to breed with other females later, but occasionally the female is faster than the breeder and eats the male before they can be separated. It is definitely unfortunate when this happens, but most breeders note that the chance of a viable, healthy egg sac seems to be much higher when the male is eaten during the breeding process. Cannibalism and tarantula mating is an important part of the natural world, and it has been going on for millions of years. Tarantulas have evolved to engage in this behavior, and it is an important part of their biology and ecology. By studying cannibalism in tarantulas, we can learn about the biology and behavior of these fascinating creatures, and we can gain a better understanding of the natural world as a whole. It may seem reprehensible and something to be avoided at all cost, especially in captivity, but I hope this video sheds a little light on why it happens in nature, and why sometimes it is an unavoidable consequence when breeding in captivity. I don't know anyone personally that intentionally feeds their male tarantulas to the female tarantulas when they're breeding, but I do know that no one seems happy when it does unfortunately take place. The only silver lining in those cases is that we can rest assured that the female is well fed and full of the vitamins and minerals that she will need to lay a very healthy egg sac. So hopefully it will be full of healthy spiderlings. And having had such a large meal, the female may be much less inclined to eat her egg sac before the spiderlings emerge. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next time. <laughs>